Welcome back, everyone, to episode two of Let's Talk Block. I'm here joined again by Gregory Siener. He's the president of Lock and Block. Sorry, I missed your little introduction there last week, Greg. I was so excited to talk to Dr. John Safer. I just skipped right over you, um, which again, <laughs> we brought him back in for um, just answering some additional questions we had about testing and such. So quick recap from last week. We talked a little bit about some of the tests that Lock and Black and Plasti Black had already been through, some different tests that are coming in the near future and kind of what those expectations really are, what some of the testing looks like. Um, so just kind of talked a little bit about that briefly, but Greg, I don't want to steal your thunder. I want to give you a second here to kind of introduce yourself too before we get started. No, not a problem at all. I appreciate it, Bailey. And John, thanks for coming back to, to be with us for episode two. We appreciate you taking the time to, to answer some questions. Um, I think I just wanted to point out the, the main objective here with, with both part one, what we did last week and what we're doing today, we're just trying to get a good understanding of where lock and block is with our testing and where we stand with being able to, to begin building with, with our product. Um, We've talked a little bit about uh, last week, some of the tests that we've completed to date and how we, how we did those. Um, and what I basically want to, to, the point I want to start out with, I guess this what week is um, where we're at with our testing um, and ask you just to, again, give a, a brief sum, summary of what we've done so far and what do you think um, we have what are the, the primary things we have to accomplish before we can begin building with lock and block, even on a small scale? John, would you mind giving us a, a sure. quick answer to that, if, if possible? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Greg, I'm an engineer. None of my answers are quick. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> you know that by now. <laughs> um, so uh, I think where we left off, uh, last time was we talked a little bit about um, what tests we have completed. And um, so we do have a panel of tests um, set up uh, that we feel like are necessary to, uh, like you described, take the next step here and uh, uh, start building uh, residential buildings or like commercial buildings. And um, so if you'd like, I can just run through those uh, if, if that's uh, if that's where you want to go. Um, sure, sure. Okay. I think that's um, a good thing. Yeah. So the, the first couple of tests, uh, I think last time I uh, described a little bit about the tests are kind of grouped into a couple different buckets. Uh, we do tests on small uh, components from the block. Uh, we do tests on individual block units, and then we do tests on larger assemblies of the block, such as larger wall assemblies. Uh, those are our primary, in terms of structural tests, those are our primary uh, kind of test buckets. Uh, there's some other tests that we also need to do for uh, occupancy, uh, for occupied buildings. Um, and so uh, the first couple of those tests uh, that we want to do, uh, the first is a thermal transmission test. Um, and so it's important for us to understand uh, what type of, basically what is the R value of the block itself. So all buildings dependent on their location in the, in the country, dependent on their, um, uh, I guess the, the temperature range that they're exposed to, uh, there are different building requirements in terms of uh, R values of walls, minimum R values of walls and, and roofs. And so we want to understand what that is for lock and block uh, so we can determine, uh, you know, does any supplemental insulation uh, need to be applied or, uh, or not? Uh, and so uh, that's a test that we're actually going to partner with Underwriters Lab for. Uh, we don't actually do that test in-house, but uh, we actually uh, uh, have already had preliminary discussions with them and they have um, a test set up for us to do that. Uh, the next test that we want to do is another one uh, partnering with Underwriters Lab and that's a fire performance and smoke development test. And so this is really the primary test we need to 
uh, performed to establish an equivalence with uh, one of the occupancy categories that are in all building codes. Uh, and uh, we don't have any uh, the we don't have any issue or don't don't have any reason to believe that it won't perform satisfactorily based on uh, the type of material it is, but uh, it still needs to be performed and uh, that test data would need to be submitted. So jumping back then to our, comp our structural tests, um, the first couple tests that we have on tap are uh, to do some compression tests of the blocks themselves. Uh, we've done some of these already uh, preliminarily, but uh, there have been some uh, modifications made to the uh, to the blowing agent that's used in the block, and so we want to uh, test again with those, with that new uh, kind of modified material. Uh, Greg, you can probably talk about that a little bit more, but based on our understanding of the changes that you've made, we anticipate <clears throat> even better results in terms of uh, compression strength and uh, creep performance, compressive creep performance of the block. So um, I don't know if that's something you want to talk about or just want me to keep going well, here. Clarify, we, we really didn't change the blowing agent as much as we've changed some of the, the tooling design, the mold design, which is going okay. to give us a better, with the blowing agent that we're using, it's going to give us a better cavity fill and, and um, give us a, a more complete fill when we inject into the mold. So uh, right. not, not so much a material change as a, as a change in the molding and the, the flow control in the mold. Got it, got it. So I think, yeah, I, I apologize. I, it's been a while since we talked about that, but I think the bottom line was still that we would anticipate improved test results from that, uh, uh, from that change. Uh, in the mold. Uh, the next several tests that we need to perform are uh, larger wall assembly tests. Uh, the first is what is called an out of plane flexure test. And so we would build a large uh, uh, 10 by loaded basically out of plane. We would basically support it at the top and bottom and push on it. Um, we would also do the same thing uh, under compression loads. We would load the wall uh, vertically down uh, on top to determine its uh, overall compression and resistance to buckling. Um, the next one would be a flexural com a uh, combination flexural compression test where we load a wall uh, uh, out of plane in flexure, uh, in bending basically, and also apply a compression load to it. And so this test will uh, based on our acceptance criteria, will provide the allowable compressive strength uh, for the uh, exterior walls. The next uh, next several I plan to do are related to connections to the blocks. So um, there are going to be different elements in uh, in a residential building or like commercial building uh, that won't be made out of block and block, uh, and we need to be able to connect those to the blocks. And so in order to determine that, we have to perform a screw perform in the block uh, in terms of pull out, in terms of shear. Uh, and so those two tests we would need to perform. Uh, and then also uh, there are fatigue related tests with, with, with regard to the connections. So, uh, we would load them in tension and shear over and over. Um, and then uh, there are several I feel like are necessarily required, but uh, I know, uh, you know, Greg, has, you, you, uh, we've talked about uh, performing air infiltration tests uh, and an air pressure and water penetration test to determine uh, again, with uh, with one of the uh, one of the block assemblies, do they pass uh, these requirements and building codes for air infiltration, or does some type of supplemental membrane or product need to be applied? So uh, that's the uh, 
I know that's not a short answer, but uh, <laughs> there are several tests and, and they, they each are equally, uh, equally important. Some are, uh, some tests are, are, are large, some tests are small, but in terms of uh, a, a building, they are all equally important uh, and need Awesome. Yeah, you definitely went into a lot of details there. So glad you kind of touched on all that again. I'm just going to start taking some notes right here on my invisible board so I can keep track of all these technical terms you keep throwing out here at me. Um, no, it's good. It's really helpful. Um, so I guess kind of jumping into what we wanted to talk a little bit more about today, Dr. John Zafura, um, what kind of problems do you envision, if any, with the product performing satisfactory in either a residential or a commercial market? Well, I, you know, in terms of kind of basic obstacles to the performance of the block, uh, you know, we feel like we've done enough preliminary testing where we're beyond that point. Um, there are a number of tests, the ones that I've described that um, still need to be performed, but um, a lot of those tests, again, are just to determine the capabilities of the block. You know, for example, uh, if we do a connection test, you know, we, we want to see how a screw, what kind of strength the screw has in, in the block. But um, we just use that data, you know, ultimately for design. And again, it's not really a pass fail type of test. And in, on the last episode, we did talk about a large scale load test that we performed. Um, and, you know, some of those, uh, for example, connection uh, type details we already used in that load test. And so we've seen that, um, you know, that there is a, a good capability there already. So um, in terms of kind of basic questions like that, I think we're beyond that. And um, um, so I think, is that, is that, sorry. No, yeah, you um, just me? so that. <laughs> no, you're your great, you're great. <laughs> um, I just want to make sure that I understand. So it's not necessarily understanding if the product's going to perform. It's just understanding to what extent is it capable of performing at, right? But yeah, I think, I think people have different, uh, different definitions of performance. Yeah. Um, my computer keeps, keeps locking. I'm enjoying the facial expressions it's locking on. So really it's great. On our, on our happening end. too often. <laughs> Uh, you know, in terms of how does a block, how does the block perform? Again, it's not really a, it performs or it doesn't perform. It's, you know, it's, it's a level and, uh, you know, um, uh, lock and block. And we even let's just go back to the basic compression strength of the block. You know, we're, we're compressing it. You know, what is its strength? Every, every material has a strength like that concrete, you know, kind of CMU blocks, steel, everything. So uh, it's really what is that strength and then how do we design with it? So um, that's, I think, really where we're at uh, in terms of performing these, uh, uh, these additional tests going forward. Great. So then you and Greg had talked a little bit about how, and correct me if I get this wrong, but you modified one of the blowing agents that basically creates the injected mold block, right? Am I saying that correctly? We, a blowing agent is something that's used in part of your material. We didn't, oh, okay. gotcha. we didn't change a blowing agent. What okay. we did change is there's things in the, in the mold, in the actual cavity of the mold where the plastic goes into. And we've made modifications to that so that when the material comes into the mold, it will fill the mold completely. Uh, okay. We had some issues, even though we were showing very high compressive strengths and very, very high strength in the compression tests and tensile tests and other tests that we conducted, uh, we had some voids in the material that, that we made modifications to the mold to try and, and get complete mold fill out of it. So, so we have a better, better test results than what we even had to begin with. Okay. The reason why I wanted to clarify that is because one of the other questions I wanted to ask today is if there's any reason why, say, lock and block would have to go back to the drawing board. 
um, with any of these tests. You had just mentioned modifying one of those features. So um, outside of that, or in addition to that, would we ever have to really go back to the drawing board after doing some of these tests? Are you asking me that question or sure. that question? <laughs> I was going to say whoever goes first. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's more of a, I, I, and I, I think what Bailey's trying to get at, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, is, you know, based on what you've seen from, from what we have now, um, do you see anything that would cause us a significant amount of concern that we would have to go back and redesign our product to make it be usable? No, I, I don't think so. Uh, and again, I feel like we've done enough preliminary testing to uh, um, to make that uh, make that statement. Uh, I, I'm sure that just like any product, there will be, you know, as uh, that's part of what testing is, and part of what using a product is, is you um, you see how it's used, and and uh, you make small modifications going forward, but. Uh, that's that's much different than going back to the drawing board. Um, I'm starting from scratch or something like that. So, yeah. Okay, awesome. Greg, you have anything to add to that? Thanks for jumping in and making my question a little simpler. No, no problem. I don't have anything to add. I just, okay. you know, there's there has been concern that uh, from some of our potential investors that that look at the product and and wonder if 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 we're far enough along in the testing to know where we stand and, and if any, any major modifications are going to have to be made. So it's, it's good to know that, that, that you don't anticipate or see any of those things that, that would be required. Yeah, no, I don't. And I mean, I, even some of the, there are some important tests that still need to be performed. I mean, like I said, the, um, uh, the smoke development and fire performance tests are obviously critical to any product uh, being used in an occupied building uh, and are required by every building code. But, um, you know, we don't have any concerns in terms of the results of that test because of the type of material that uh, the blocks are made out of. So we feel like it's just a simple question of we just need to perform the test and we're going to get the result that we anticipate. Okay. <clears throat> So then Dr. John Safura, in your professional point of view and with your knowledge of building products um, in the marketplace, how do you see this product specifically? Is it just another option for the builder to use? Well, I, it, it certainly is a different option for the builder to use. I think, um, um, you know, it has some real strengths over uh, other types of uh, products and, um, and I, primarily being it's, it's lighter weight and it's uh, ease and, and uh, time required to assemble. Uh, those are uh, elements that uh, translate into, you know, direct costs for uh, builders and uh, owners. So those are significant, uh, significant advantages. Awesome. So then what does this product offer when utilized in building a home beyond that of just a typical uh, stick built home? I know you touched a little bit on different cost savings for the builders, but can you elaborate maybe more? Sure. Well, um, I think based on some of the preliminary testing that, that uh, our preliminary analysis, I guess I should say that I, I, I believe that Greg has done, I, I think it's the blocks uh, are anticipated to have a pretty substantial uh, thermal resistance in our value. So uh, if that's, uh, if testing bears that out and, and we don't need to uh, use supplemental insulation in some parts of the country, then that's a huge advantage. Um, that's another step and another material that doesn't have to be added to, uh, to a building. Uh, just in terms to, to CMU, I guess a, a small chain or small benefit I could see is uh, is the connections. Um, you know, being able to we we successfully you know added uh, uh, steel or I'm sorry wood framing and uh, and different types of um, brackets to the blocks when we did our load test, and they were very easy to attach to the blocks. 
simpler, I feel like, than uh, attaching to concrete or concrete uh, masonry units. So, um, so those are, yeah, there's certainly some, some uh, real benefits there uh, in terms of uh, constructability. Yeah, that was one of the things I liked about it was the block is really lighter and easy to kind of connect. Um, I shouldn't say easy, but it's a more simple concept, um, especially for me who doesn't have a building background to be able to help like construct a small wall or something like that. That was one of the things I really liked about sure. it. So it just makes it a lot easier. Yeah. To help with that. Greg, it looks like you were about to say yeah. something. Well, I, yeah. John brought up uh, the booth test that we did or the, the st structure that you guys built in the lab for us when you did the load testing. Can you, yeah. I guess we've, we've talked on structural side and we've talked on some of the things that, that you saw from a result standpoint, but from using it, from putting it together, from ease of use, uh, I mean, elaborate a little bit on, on what your team thought about building the building, building the, the structure. Well, it, it was very straightforward. I mean, it's, uh, it, it was very quick and, uh, um, you know, now granted we were, uh, we were also doing some of the things, you know, for the first time. Uh, so we were trying different things, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> we were doing a little experimentation ourselves. Uh, so, um, uh, but uh, it was very, you know, very straightforward to uh, assemble the blocks together. Uh, it's, it's something that probably requires, uh, doesn't require as much specialization as, uh, uh, you know, erecting a CMU wall in terms of the type of labor you would need. Um, and then I, again, as I mentioned, like just, I mean, connecting things to walls is important. <laughs> There's a lot of, a lot of labor that goes along with that. And uh, so um, that very, uh, so very easy. I mean, Greg, how long did it take you to put the wall up that's right behind you? Because if I'm not wrong, those are the blocks, right? Oh, yeah, we have a, I guess it's about 10 foot long by seven foot high. And it took us about 10 minutes to assemble. Yeah. Maybe one of these shows we should do a race to see who can put a wall together the fastest. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the race between? <laughs> All three of us. Oh. <laughs> and then we get to see who can break it down the quickest too. Um, <laughs> all right, so Dr. John Sapura, another question I have for you is about the design guide. Um, are you and your team, are you and your firm responsible for developing that as well outside of just being able to have fun building the blocks and such? We are. That's also in our, uh, um, sorry, I keep this, for some reason it keeps freezing up, but we are, that is part of our scope uh, uh, for, for lock and block. And, um, you know, as we got into it, um, and we've done some of the details uh, for the blocks already. Um, not a lot, but, but some, but um, we felt like it, it really uh, made a lot of sense to do that along with the testing because um, a lot of the testing that we will do will be dependent on the details that we develop. We need to test the types of assemblies that are gonna be uh, specified in the design guide. And um, we also, some of the details just need to be developed. They are not out there. And uh, so having the understanding that we uh, have uh, to a greater degree when uh, you know we get rolling again um, I think lends itself naturally to developing the various details that uh, uh, need to be produced. So, so yes, absolutely. That's, that's part of, uh, part of our scope as well. Okay. Very nice. Greg, I feel like you're itching to ask some questions over there. So what else you got for us? <laughs> really don't have anything else. I'm, uh, I mean, we're, we're reaching our 30 minute time limit. And as I said before, I want to try and keep these wrapped up within within 30 minutes. Um, John, you know, I, I know you're a professional and I know you can't, <laughs> it's, it's hard for you to endorse or, or to <laughs> give an opinion, but 
in in John Safura's opinion, let's drop the doctor and the PhD off of it. From uh, <laughs> in John's opinion, um, what do you think about lock and block? I mean, we've we've had we've become friends, and 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 you know, you've worked and helped us in in the testing and the development of our product. But if if John was building a home, what what's your thought about lock and block? Can you give us your opinion? I mean, I, I think it's a, it's a great option for, for building a home. I certainly would, uh, uh, you know, would consider using it. So, um, yeah, I think that, uh, you know, has a lot, like I said, has a lot of advantages, uh, from what I've seen from a strength and, uh, uh, from a strength standpoint, there are no issues there in terms of using it for, uh, a house or like commercial structure. And I'm sure the testing will bear out that that uh, will be also true for, uh, you know, for larger buildings as well. So um, yeah, I think it, I think it has a lot of advantages and uh, seeing as how I'm a DIYer myself, I think I could probably tackle uh, doing it as well. <laughs> so, <laughs> Um, all right. Well, thanks everyone again for your time today. I know that we have had some questions in the past. So if anyone has any additional questions, feel free to just comment on that Facebook link that you're watching the video from. Um, we'll definitely get back with back to you with answers to your questions and make sure that others can see that um, what those responses are too. So um, if you guys don't have anything else to add, we'll wrap up today's episode. Thanks everyone. The only thing I'd like to add is uh, go out and check out our new website, www.lockandblock.io, and that's L-O-K hyphen and hyphen B-L-O-K dot I-O. Um, we've got a new website. We'd like everybody to take a look at it, make comments, uh, send us your we comments and suggestions. And if you do have any questions and post them to this Facebook video, uh, we monitor the website and the Facebook site constantly. So we'll certainly get back to you quickly with answers to your questions. And it'll either be from one of us here at Lock and Block, or uh, if you have a question for John, we'll pose it to him and, and let him reply to you as well. John, thank you. Appreciate your time. And Bailey, thank you for leading the interview. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. Thank you.